<clears throat> well, good afternoon, afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Perky. I'm with Lolliman uh, Brewing. I'm the senior key account manager uh, with the, the North American Group, based here in Hood River, Oregon, or just outside. And I've been with the company for about uh, six years now in a couple of different roles. Um, I started my brewing career in 1992, working for a brewery in Portland called Bridgeport. Spent 18 years in um, breweries and cideries uh, along the way, a few years with uh, um, a liquid yeast lab here in Oregon and an English malt company. And uh, thirdly, enjoyed my time with uh, uh, Lollamond and because one of the things I get to do is come either online uh, or out to um, conferences and give technical talks on not just the yeast that we sell, but also the auxiliary products that we have at our disposal to help brewers achieve uh, healthy fermentations. So a little bit about Lollamond is that we're um, a company based up in uh, Montreal. We've been in the yeast and bacteria manufacturing business for uh, oh, 120 years or so. We're 5,000 employees or so scattered around uh, 45, 46 countries uh, in, the, in the world. And we do everything uh, from uh, brewing yeast to baking to uh, pharmaceutical applications. Uh, there's about uh, 12 different business units uh, within our company. I have the fortune of working for the brewing unit. So uh, uh, today our presentation is on uh, yeast nutrition, uh, ensuring your yeast health. Uh, part of this um, presentation is pulled from our specialized lecture uh, that we uh, offer through Siebel, one of our entities. Uh, and then the products uh, that are used to uh, provide adequate nutrition uh, to your yeast uh, are available through uh, another one of our entities, uh, AB Vickers, based in Burton on, uh, on Trent in the UK. So I couldn't be doing a live presentation without having a beer. So uh, one of the breweries that I worked at was uh, Full Sail and uh, here in Hood River. And today, since, uh, since I am on the job, uh, I am having a non-alcoholic uh, Italian style Pilsner from uh, our good friends and customers up at uh, Untitled uh, Art, uh, just outside of Madison, uh, Madison Wisconsin. So uh, cheers to you. I appreciate you joining me for uh, this talk. Done this a couple of times before, but uh, shouldn't stumble too badly uh, through this. Although it's, although it's been a while. We've been focusing on Lona, which is our low and no alcohol uh, yeast strain. And it's provided uh, ample opportunity to uh, talk about uh, the importance of uh, food safety uh, in, uh, in brewing applications. So, um, <clears throat> um, uh, stabilization, uh, in the final product is just as important as stabilization in your yeast pitch. And, uh, that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about here this afternoon. So why nutrition, uh, and why now? I think it's one of the most misunderstood aspects of uh, fermentation uh, and there's a lot to realize and understand that the requirements of yeast are different when it comes to producing beer versus producing biomass and the yeast might be at odds with what you as a brewer are trying to achieve 
in the end result. So, um, so that's why we're going to get into uh, some of the nuances here. Again, cheers for joining. Mm. Nice and dry, as it should. Um, so we're going to cover five points during the course of this talk uh, today. And I've got about an hour and we'll go through some Q&A at the end uh, if you are so inclined. Uh, uh, my email is bperky at lawwoman.com. Feel free to shoot me any uh, questions or uh, uh, additional needs uh, in terms of information uh, bef uh, after, after the fact. So five points we're going to cover today. We're going to go through the and describe the nutritional requirements of yeast. We're going to list the necessary nutrients that are obtained from wort and how we need to adjust that for optimal fermentation performance. We're going to discuss why oxygen is vital and what exactly it does. We're going to explain the uptake and utilization of nutrients through the course of fermentation. And then we're also going to understand the impact of glucose repression and what we need to do to address that unique challenge uh, that can occur, especially in today's um, challenging fermentations. So uh, what we're trying to do here is give the yeast what it needs in order to uh, go through a full active and healthy metabolic cycle. And how we do that is uh, how and what we feed it. And this is through the composition of our word, sugars, amino acids, etc. And what that yeast cells is ultimately wants to do is make more yeast. It's all it's interested in, not concerned about the recipe, what it is you're trying to do, equipment scale, blah, blah, blah. All it wants to do is make more yeast. And in the process, it's going to produce a whole bunch of other stuff uh, in tandem. And this goes from um, uh, POF uh, flavors, uh, including sulfur compounds, aldehydes and ketones, esters, glycerol production, it's going to go through CO2 uh, um, uh, production uh, and uh, um, disposal, uh, which will influence carb or carbonic acid levels uh, in the, the finished beer. Alcohols, obviously, not just ethanol, but higher fusel oils, uh, organic and fatty acids uh, uh, as well. So... These all impact the 400, over 400, flavor and aroma compounds that are found in beer uh, of the uh, uh, 900 in total. Yeast has a huge impact, uh, as we all probably know, about how the, the beer you're producing uh, turns out. I mean, how many of us has taken the same wort and pitched with a different yeast strain and just being blown away at how different of beers that you get out of that process? This is uh, this is an example why. Um, and nutrient requirements uh, or additions play a huge role in influencing uh, those, uh, those components. And really, the elemental requirements of yeast can be broken down into two categories, and that's macro and micro elements. Macro elements are those, uh, those components, excuse me, Those components that the yeast uh, use the most of, right? Uh, and these include uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium, sulfur, uh, and magnesium. 
So micro elements uh, and those those macro elements are in excess of the, you know, up in the hundreds of uh, uh, parts uh, per per million. Uh, uh, the micro elements in the, you know, the sub hundred PPM are calcium, zinc, iron, manganese, copper, nickel, cobalt, uh, molybdenum. Uh, these are, these are trace elements. And then there's also, uh, not requirements, but uh, to be considered uh, toxic metals, uh, aluminum, uh, mercury, lead, uh, typically don't show up in uh, brewing applications, but uh, you never know, especially if you're on uh, an old uh, dilapidated uh, system in the basement somewhere. So the function of those uh, principal elements uh, we see here uh, both on the macro and the micro side and uh, what specifically they do or the function they perform uh, in the cellular metabolic activity through the course of fermentation. So top to bottom, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon in the form of sugar, uh, nitrogen, sulfur, uh, phosphorus, or sorry, potassium, uh, phosphorus and potassium, manganese. Then on the micro element side, there's really two that we're concerned with here, and that's the calcium, uh, which has a huge impact on uh, flocculation or the cell to cell uh, inner activity and interconnectivity potential. And then the zinc, which has a huge impact in the formation of alcohol dehydrogenase. And uh, that's important for the, uh, the metabolism of uh, ethanol uh, further, uh, further downstream. And we'll talk about, uh, talk about most of these here in a, in a bit. So the yeast nutrients that are in wort or supplied by wort um, carbohydrates in, via uh, fermentable sugars, nitrogen sources, mainly in the form of uh, amino acids. We've got uh, inorganic sources of uh, nutrients, um, uh, potassium, sulfur, uh, magnesium, other materials, uh, oxygen via, via uh, air or, uh, or uh, sterile O2, and then yeast foods in uh, the form of vitamins, fatty acids, sterols, minerals. Wort composition between um, uh, what we see in the wort that we provide the yeast, and then in turn, what the yeast produces for us in the form of beer. And you see a huge uptake or depletion of uh, carbohydrates uh, and uh, uh, nitrogen and the, the alcohol requires a lot of energy in the, um, um, it, well, the yeast requires a lot of energy in the production of alcohol and through the form of, uh, through the form of carbohy carbohydrates. Also of note is the drop in pH in this and how the yeast has to manage that, which is essentially a toxic condition as well. That alcohol takes a lot of energy. So the influence of the Wharton uh, um, nutrition uh, composition that we provide the yeast is key in these four um, actions. So the rate and degree of uh, attenuation, which is really comes down to fermentation performance. How efficiently is this moving through the amount of yeast produce? So we're trying to build some biomass through some sort of a propagation uh, procedure, uh, understanding that uh, you know, like Goldilocks, you know, you don't want uh, too much, you don't want too little, you just need the right amount. 
and uh, and we actually get a reduced um, level of biomass in uh, higher gravity worts. Uh, how important this composition is in the characteristics of the beer when it comes to flavor, foam, aroma, body, uh, and then uh, also yeast flocculation. So how will this stuff drop out or not and what you need to do downstream in order to end up with, you know, either a beautiful clear beer like uh, what the, the folks at uh, Untitled Art are giving us. Mm. Or uh, if you're looking for something uh, uh, that doesn't flock out, like you want a you want a hazy uh, presentation in uh, in your beer. So how you build your wort is there's direct correlation as to how that's going to come out in the uh, in the end. So carbon sources that the yeast are primarily chewing on. It's mostly the hectose and uh, disaccharide sugars here. So think uh, the starting sugars, uh, glucose, uh, fructose, uh, sucrose. Uh, we get into uh, a maltose as well. And then uh, slowly moving around the, the ring, the trisaccharides or the maltotriose, uh, longer chain uh, sugars, also the poly and the oligosaccharides. So these in the form of starches and uh, maltodextrins, uh, tetrasaccharides, which surprisingly comprise a large part of uh, a wort composition uh, are exclusive to specific strains of um, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So uh, there are also yeast strains out there that do not work on the trisaccharides, so the non maltotriose strains. We've got uh, now through Lona, uh, which is one of our proprietary hybrid strains, uh, does not utilize maltose, so just the starting sugars. And then there's uh, non-Saccharomyces strains, think, uh, uh, think uh, Britannomyces, uh, that will chew or, or a, a diastatic positive strain like our Belle Saison, uh, other Saison or Belgian uh, strains. Uh, I'm sure there's other like traditional diastatic positive strains out there that will chew on these polysaccharides and uh, oligosaccharides, uh, uh, converting those starches and uh, dextrins into a, uh, into a fermentable sugar. Your typical sugar composition of wort, uh, think uh, oh, uh, almost 60% of your wort composition falls under the starting sugar and the maltose uh, category. You know, 10% or so of that is in the maltotriose. So it's a good uh, way to, uh, via yeast selection, um, uh, control the amount of fermentable sugars and uh, mouthfeel body in your beers. And then the uh, tetra and oligosaccharides uh, comprise of about a quarter of a percent. So uh, this is uh, a, a good indication or example of why yeast selection is so important in the final composition and character of your beer. Some yeast will work well with these sugars, some yeasts uh, do not. So nitrogen for brewing yeast. Why is nitrogen so important and why do we put such an emphasis on this? It's one of the uh, macro elements. So it needs a lot for a healthy uh, fermentation and without sufficient nitrogen, yeast just will not um, ferment. So much of the yeast metabolism 
uh, of some of the amino acids are linked uh, to beer flavor uh, compounds. Uh, nitrogen has a direct uh, influence on the provision of some of those uh, amino acids. Um, typically, that fan in wort should be about 150 grams per liter. So, and that's all based on um, what form you're using, whether it's a DAP or organic form, uh, etc. Uh, and then uh, uh, yeast uh, during the course of fermentation takes up most amino acids in a very specific order and uh, uh, nitrogen is uh, one of those and a key link in uh, that successive chain. Some inorganic sources of uh, uh, nutrients uh, that uh, come from work, uh, typically um, um, uh, phosphorus, uh, sulfur, uh, potassium are uh, in sufficient amounts, um, but uh, what possibly can be a deficient in, uh, in uh, most uh, work compositions are adequate zinc levels. And then the magnesium to calcium ratio, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about here in, uh, in a minute. I like an Italian pills. It's nice and dry and hoppy and super clean. So you need to make more of those, folks. Uh, let's talk about a little bit uh, uh, about the elemental roles of metal ions and brewing. So much of this comes down to some of these components. This is why it's important to get a reading or printout of your local water table so you know what it is that you're starting from as a baseline. I mean, uh, think about, uh, you know, and then think about what it is you're trying to do. In this case, we'll use Burtonization as a, uh, an example. Uh, you're trying to model your beers after those early English IPAs from Burton on Trent, uh, their home of Bass, also home of AB Vickers, uh, which is where many of our nutrient and enzyme process aid products come from. So it has a huge impact on beer flavor, but also look here and see how influential calcium is on the um, efficient fermentation uh, performance. I mean, from the creation of alpha amylase, uh, yeast flocculation, which we've discussed, that yeast to, or that cell to cell interaction, uh, oxalate to precipitation, moving that stuff out of solution, the control and stability of uh, work pH, not just from calcium, but also iron has an influence on uh, foam and uh, how your beer will oxidize, copper, how uh, copper uh, uh, levels are key on controlling sulfury flavors or eliminating sulfury flavors. And then um, zinc, uh, which you should all know to uh, influence complete and healthy fermentations and avoid stuck fermentations. Why do yeast need metal? It's, it's, why, it's why brewers like to listen to metal. Uh, it just it goes with brewing. But uh, yeast need these trace metals for these attributes. Really, like we talked about, cell-to-cell -cell interactions. It's where uh, calcium comes into play, cell division, structure, and growth. Uh, those enzymatic and metabolic pathways require these uh, trace elements. And then not only for a healthy fermentation, but then also how the yeast deals with some of the stress that comes from fermentation, osmotic, um, uh, alcohol, thermal, they all have a, they all have a part 
just like you need a vitamin to get through your 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 life cycle <laughs> in a healthy manner. So key minerals in brewing important because uh, it's how we compose the wort to do one of those two things. Are we trying to propagate, create yeast, which is really what the, the, the yeast wants to do, or we're trying to maximize fermentation and create ethanol and keep biomass to a correct and appropriate level. How we build our wort is how we get there. So some of the macro elements that are key and important in, um, in your fermentations and require your attention and nutrient addition. And the first of these I'm going to focus on because it's the furthest down the chain is magnesium. <clears throat> Appropriate levels of magnesium have shown a direct relationship between viability and vitality. And this is important, especially when you are, um, um, uh, harvesting and repitching uh, your yeast. So you want to make sure that when your yeast goes into uh, stasis or hibernation post crash, you pull it out for the next fermentation, you can wake it up and get it going again. It needs to have adequate levels of magnesium to, uh, to get there. A couple of reasons. One, it's re required for glycolysis right and so and what glycolysis is it's the conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid en route to ethanol production uh, uh downstream uh, fermentation and it's also a stress protectorant so we talked about this before uh ethanol stresses osmotic stresses uh and thermal stresses. So magnesium is key. The other role magnesium has is how it works or doesn't work with calcium. So we need to get enough magnesium in, uh, in the yeast in order to get through a healthy fermentation. Uh, but we also need enough calcium in our solution to effectively uh, help uh, yeast with that cell to cell interaction and participate and flocculate out. So there's a there's a balance there that we uh, actually have to hit with our magnesium and calcium levels. And this is why it's important to get your water report uh, uh, and use that as a baseline for what it is you're trying to do based on the beer you're trying to make. So you're not just hitting it with um, the supplier's recommended dose or whatever the former brewer, you know, was always using. So uh, make sure that your magnesium and calcium ratio is optimized. Uh, and that might be, uh, take a few bench trials to, um, to dial in. So the importance of zinc, um, um, which is an essential trace element, this falls in the micro category, not necessarily the macro category. However, uh, it moves through zinc, uh, yeast moves through zinc very rapidly. It takes, it's a rapid, uh, utilization and why it's so important uh, through the course of your fermentation is that it's uh, it's there for the activation of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH. Uh, and why this is important is that it's, uh, it's a critical part of the metabolic pathway to ethanol production. So lower levels of this will result in um, stuck fermentations. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a key trace element for yeast, uh, physiology and, uh, performance. 
Um, the other th important thing that zinc is um, um, critical for is cell brain or uh, cell membrane stabilizer. So, or stabilization. And this, again, this is important for uh, downstream use. You're harvesting and repitching uh, the this this particular batch strain, whatever. Uh, you need uh, uh, appropriate levels of zinc in there in order to help uh, do that. So important that we've actually got a product specifically for this function. It's Servomyces. We've had it for years and years. It's a uh, uh, it's important tool for brewers to ensure uh, healthy uh, healthy fermentations. So a little more uh, on zinc. It's that critical. Minimum of six milligrams per hundred grams of dry yeast mass for good yeast activity. This info is on the Brewer's Corner of our website, lollamanbrewing.com. It's non-toxic, up to one milligram per liter, so it's really hard to overdo. But uh, uh, just like anything, you can you can overdo it. Uh, it's an essential component of several enzymes and coenzymes. It's a protective factor against killer yeast specific proteases. It stimulates carbohydrate, protein, fat metabolisms, and it accelerates maltose and maltotriose uptake, leading to faster fermentation. Um, zinc's important. Don't overlook it, especially when it comes to glucose repression. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So some important factors uh, to, uh, to consider when we're talking about uh, work composition and uh, uh, nutrient requirements of yeast is that minerals should not be ignored. Uh, it's essential to monitor and optimize your uh, magnesium, your calcium, your zinc levels and your yeast fermentations. Uh, zinc uptake is rapid and complete. Low zinc is problematic. I'm going to show you why here in a minute. Uh, mineral requirements may differ for what it is that you're trying to do. Are you trying to prop a bunch of yeast, build biomass, or are you trying to uh, just uh, produce a uh, uh, liquid in, uh, in beer for fermentation? So you need to pay attention there. Low levels of key minerals. Um, Magnesium, zinc, um, uh, they may impact adversely on how uh, stress resistant your yeast is or really your fermentation and flocculation performance. Is the stuff dropping out? Are you having stuck ferments? Uh, is it not doing what you want it to do? And then, uh, then the other thing is that yeast preconditioning it might alleviate some of the stress and boost fermentation. This is really only a consider when you're talking about stressed ferments, uh, high alcohol, high acid, uh, bottle conditioning, uh, et cetera. Uh, you may have to look at uh, yeast preconditioning based on strain selection uh, for, uh, for your specific application. So some zinc uptake factors. I love this slide. Um, the dye here on the right hand side shows a really bright green and then a diminished green. And this shows how zinc gets moved through the reproduction of the cells via budding uh, down uh, downstream. That's why you need enough either up front or through, or through a fed batch process to make sure that your yeast has enough zinc because it uh, it moves quickly. I mean, your zinc content in your wort is almost zero after an hour. So, uh, and that it accumulates in the yeast, which redis redistributes to dividing cells. So uh, um, goes through a quick uptake and is quickly di diluted. So you need to make sure that you've got enough up front uh, or through the process um, that uh, that your stay your cells stay well fed with zinc. Oxygen. So what does oxygen do? Why is it important? It's actually used as a growth factor in reproduction. 
So the biosynthesis of uh, the O2 helps synthesize key membrane components. And this is uh, ergosterol and oleic acid in specifically uh, or specifically. Uh, uh, and what it does is it provides the cell wall or allows the cell wall to remain very flexible. So it will help with the not just the membrane integrity but allow it to become flexible and porous enough to allow passive di uh, diffusion to occur uh, allow uh, glycogen mobilization uh, to uh, to occur uh, it helps with ethanol tolerance so really what it does it just keeps uh, keeps the cell loose uh, um, uh, and allows uh, not just the you know, the passage of uh, nutrients, but allows healthy budding uh, to occur for um, uh, healthy fermentation. So, in talking about pathways, you know what uh, what O two does. You know what's uh, what are all the ins and out? Pardon the puns of getting the nutrients into the yeast cell and then in turn having the yeast push out the metabolites that we're after beer in this case um and really it's uh it's the translocation of wort nutrients into brewing yeast and some of the physical and chemical barriers of uh the passage of this this uh important uh, or these important components. So here are the, the primary barriers, cellular barriers are the cell wall, the periplasm, the cell plasma membrane, and then we've got some internal structures, organelles, etc., that will uh, provide some physical barriers to the uh, diffusion of these elements. Some of the um, uh, uh, physical care, uh, chemical barriers are chelation. So this is where nutrients will bind up on the exterior of the cellular wall uh, and uh, won't uh, allow uh, the, uh, the diffusion. We have, uh, you know, adsorption or absorption issues. And this is where unhealthy uh, yeast, either through stress or nutrient deficiency, uh, will not allow nutrients to move uh, back and forth. Really, this comes down to um, uh, uh, lack of enzymatic uh, activity. I know we got molecular size of, uh, of the um, uh, components uh, either too large, too small, or the cellular wall uh, is, the gateways are too large, too small. Looking at the, um, the cellular plasma membrane here, um, this is actually a, a human cell. And let's see, I got a pointer here and we're looking at uh, some of the, you know, some of the protein uh, gateways, pathways that uh, allow the uh, um, the transmigration or diffusion of uh, of uh, uh, nutritious uh, or nutritious, yeah, elements. Uh, then one thing I want you to take a look at here is you see this, which is again, this is a human cell wall. This is represented as cholesterol. But this is the, the um, ergoster, uh, ergosterol that's um, impacted or influenced, provided by O2. This is why oxygen is so important uh, or in the use of uh, dried yeast, you know, how we condition the yeast to, to come back and perform adequately is that this provides a flexibility of the cellular wall to allow the transmigration of those uh, those components. The transport mechanisms through that cellular wall, right? So these uh, these protein gateways, 
they really they uh, fall into these four categories. Uh, there are three that are passive. They don't require any sort of energy consumption. So these are some of the starter sugars, uh, uh, O2 and water, you know, and then uh, ethanol and CO2 can uh, move through here. The uh, free and uh, facilitated uh, diffusion channels, um, those occur from having a healthy limber cell wall, adequate levels of uh, uh, enzymes um, that provide um, uh, enzymes of proteins that provide gateways to allow the diffusion of uh, elements through the cell wall. And then we've got uh, active transport. So this is where uh, ATP, uh, um, adenine, adin, adenosine triphosphate, uh, and this is essentially what you, uh, it's a proton pump that actively moves a charged hydrogen uh, molecule through the cell wall. So this requires energy. Uh, it's one of the performance of a healthy fermentation. And this will move the uh, dye and trisaccharides along with the additional uh, nutritious elements through the cell wall. I cannot do it unless there's some sort of active uh, transport uh, mechanism. So we talked a little bit about glucose repression, and that's kind of what this slide uh, is uh, talking about. So yeast will go through sugars in succession, uh, starting with uh, glucose. So and you see, uh, there's, there's my pointer. You see this uh, rapid drop in glucose at the onset of the first 24 hours of fermentation before it starts working really on any of the other sugars. So if you have a high adjunct work with an elevated level of glucose, this is going to result in a slow, sluggish, stuck fermentation. Think about the rapid uptake of zinc. If it all gets used here, then the rest of these sugars don't have anything to kind of work with as it moves downstream into uh, an attenuated uh, batch. So this is why adequate nutrition based on the wort composition of what it is that you're trying to do uh, is so, so important. The best folks that have their head wrapped around uh, fermentation through glucose repression, I think our mead makers um, read up on fed batch um, um, process and uh, you'll get uh, you'll be able to work through this uh, no uh, no problem. Some potential fermentation problems that have come from a poor uh, nutrient wort. really your sugar composition. So if you have a, a high level of glucose that uh, ends up with a high uh, um, glucose repression, that that will lead in uh, stuck uh, or unattenuated uh, batches. So your metal ion availability, we talked about what, what had to happen with uh, low zinc, excess calcium, insufficient, insufficient magnesium, uh, you know, the toxic metals, the aluminum, the lead, the mercury, those can have a really uh, huge in in inhibitory effect on yeast health. Other inhibitory components are pesticides or cleaning agents. I mean, you got a batch of dirty malt. There's something uh, on uh, you know, that came from the harvest itself that's uh, slowing things down in your batch. Cleaning agents. Did you get... Uh, did you get all the sani washed out of that uh, tank before you uh, pitch your yeast in there and ran your batch on top of it? Um, insufficient O2, slow growth. You don't have a limber enough um, cellular membrane due to lack of those uh, ergosterol compounds. 
vitamin deficiencies. So usually this will revolt or result in sulfury, off notes, um, low fan. So nitrogen, one of the macro elements, super important. It needs to stay around 150 ppm. If you're using a chemical form like DAP, then that will uh, burn through really quick. Use, uh, use an organic form of nitrogen, like our yeast life O, um, and that's kind of like time release and it stays through the course of your fermentation uh, longer. And then stressed yeast. So thermal stress, uh, uh, high alcohols, high acids, um, um, particulate, I uh, think, uh, think trying to repitch a yeast, you know, that you've dry hopped in. So these, uh, these physical or chemical agents that, uh, that stress the yeast out. So these are all contribute to downstream fermentation problems. So some conclusions here. So what we're trying to do as brewers is to strive to achieve a balance between the uh, yeast growth and fermentation. And kind of the Goldilocks rule here, not too much, not too little, just right. Uh, and how we do that is that we control the feeding of the yeast. So yeast is using wort as food. And in the creation or the design of the composition of your wort, you know, what it is that we're feeding the yeast, those nutritive, nutritive factors need uh, careful consideration. So I hope I didn't bore you to tears on uh, on this one. Uh, in this talk, we've uh, gone through these five elements. And hopefully I've described the nutritional requirements of yeast, uh, what it needs and why, uh, what you get in regards to necessary nutrients obtained from your wort and what you need to do to adjust that for optimal fermentation. Uh, we've explained uh, what oxygen uh, does, why it's, uh, why it's vital, uh, along with the explanation of the uptake and utilization of nutrients in fermentation. And we've talked a bit about the impact of glucose repression and how we mitigate that in, uh, in our nutrient additions for our work. So that is it. I am looking at uh, looking at the live feed and seeing if there's anybody with any questions here. I drop a drop a comment in just to make sure this works. And if not, I appreciate your time. I'm going to put my email, cbperky at allman.com. You want to reach out to me uh, here via this email. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you're looking for any of our products to help, with uh, your fermentation, whether that's uh, yeast selection, um, nutrition requirements, any other downstream processing needs, or maybe uh, you're looking for uh, some other uh, question or comment on uh, fermentation, I'm happy to, uh, happy to help. So I appreciate your time. I'm going to just drop out of here. Thank you very much. Have a great day.